Come on. Whoa. Come on. Here he is. All right. One of my favorite new artists and one of my friends. Come on. Look at you. Dude, thanks for having me today. This is fantastic. Are you kidding? I love your new song. This is, and his name's Adam Hambrick. He's got a new song called Rockin' All Night Long. I'm going to play a little bit of it here. Drinking up every moment till it's gone. Just rocking all night long. Come on. Look at that. That's good, man. It sounds good on the radio. It does. <laughs> sounds good all the, I was listening to it the other day. I guess it's on my, like, I have like 10 or 15 songs that I always keep fresh. Like, yeah. When I just, it's on my list right now. I've got the, the new Eric Church record. Yep. Which is fantastic. Yes, I still it is. have the Eminem record in. I listen to this guy named Hobo Johnson. This song. It's like, it's good, man. Dude, I love thank it. Thank you. Thank you. And you're like a real legitimate friend. Like, we've been friends for a, a long time, so it's cool to see you, like, doing it now. Man. Yeah. I, man, it, it's it's been a really crazy last year to go because it feels like there was, like, nothing happening. And then all of a sudden, Dan and Shay cut a song of mine, then Justin Moore cut a song of mine, and then now we're here on radio tour. Doing it yourself. Doing it, doing it myself. Yeah, it's it's really interesting. So Adam Hambrick is here. He's got the song Rockin' All Night Long. You bring up uh, Dan and Shay. So yeah. this song right here. Somebody. No, this way. This song right here. <laughs> but I don't know. You wrote this. Yeah. Tell me about that. Uh, I wrote this song with uh, my buddies Paul Di Giovanni and Kevin Bard, and um, yeah, it, it was kind of it was kind of a time where I was just buckling down and trying to figure out what I do that hits the country radio target, right? And um, I really just spent a year just I'm not gonna try to be the smartest dude in the room. I'm not gonna try and write the Bluebird song. I just need to write hits every day, and and it's just kind of the discipline of of the writing community in Nashville is like. Like what can you what can you write that can be played on the radio? And that was kind of the first thing that I wrote that I really felt strongly about hit that target. And then Dan and Shay recorded it, and it became a big hit for them. Like, can you pay your house mortgage for a few months with, when a song goes that big? Oh yeah, you can. Yeah. So that's good for you, even creatively, because you get to keep creating. It gets yeah. to pay the bills for a it, while. It just it kicks it kicks the can down the road a little bit and lets you lets you work to try and try and get the next thing going. Yeah. Hey Amy, do you know? Adam's story about how he was kind of discovered and, and came to Nashville. Have I told you this? Yes. Yeah. Justin Moore was watching, the, you know, the local news, news right? in <laughs> the Arkansas. News. Yep. And he saw you performing on the news and he was like, what up? Is that true? <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it's it's kind of just a local morning uh, just TV show. KTV, right? KTV. Ned Good, Permi. Good morning, Arkansas. Ned Permi, Permi has the best hair of any uh, local uh, meteorologist in the world. Adam and I are both from Arkansas. <laughs> and so we're both Ned Permy guys. <laughs> and Ned Permy never talks to He's a weatherman. Ned Permy's a local weatherman. He plays a piano at Christmas time he on the does, show. He yep. does, yeah. Yep. And so you're on, and so you go on to what? Promote like a local show? Yeah, I was doing, I, I want to say it was a show at Stickies in Little Rock. And, um, and I was just, just doing a show and trying to get people out. And, um, I, I, I was on there playing, playing one morning and Justin Moore just had me drink coffee in his kitchen watching TV. And, uh, it was kind of like winning the songwriter lottery. Um, but Justin's a lot like you are because, you know, you kind of, you kind of wear your, your Arkansas, uh, on your, on your sleeve, literally with that tattoo. Yeah, and, right. and, uh, but, but he, he is such a, a passionate guy about where he comes from. Like if he has the opportunity to help anybody from where he comes from, he's going to do it every time. And, um, and I was a, I was a, a product of that generosity that day. And so how does he get in touch with you? Uh, so he called his producer and he's like, Hey man, you should check this guy out. And uh, and so his producer just went online, found my website, found the record that I made, and um, he kind of reached out and and invited me up to Nashville. I literally drove to Nashville the next day and met with them, and uh, and then that turned into me coming to Nashville once a month, turned into me moving to Nashville and uh, getting to write songs. Look at this guy. And then you wrote this number one song for Justin Moore. Somebody else will find on. Now, at what point in this relationship with Justin Moore did you write this song? Was it meant for Justin Moore? Did you write it? He heard it. Like how that happened? Dude, Justin would have been the last person that I thought would cut this song because because it, it it's a very pop leaning song, you know, like just like melodically and stuff. But man, when his voice is on it, it is a country hit. So you wrote it and sent it to him. Is that how it works? Uh, I, I wrote it and my publisher sent it to him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he goes, I like it. Yeah. Yeah, he. I, I think. Uh, I think they played it for him, and and he was just. He he was really excited about the song. He was about to go in the studio like two days later, I think, when he when he had actually heard it. Um, so it's kind of a, like this one and the Dan and Shay both. They were kind of last minute things that just kind of popped in, um, that worked for what they were going for. What's it like being a pastor's kid? Man, it, it's it's really interesting. I, I feel like I grow up. I grew up. Um, most you you hear that most 
preacher's kids are like the worst, right? <laughs> like um, that wasn't my story. I was always trying to be a good kid for whatever reason. Um, but I loved that I got to grow up around like a really strong community because because my dad was kind of um, in the middle of a community of people that just like loved each other. And man, we 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 had <laughs> we ate a lot of good food on uh, on the weekends. We had the Sunday fellowships in the fellowship hall, and everybody brings the casseroles and and uh, you know we watch football on on Saturdays and. You know, just like just it was pretty regular, like southern, um, southern growing up. But it was a really strong community around the church that we grew up in, and so I really love that about my story. Hmm, <clears throat> look at you! You're in the studio. I mean, it's a crazy to Eddie. Isn't it crazy to watch Adam in the studio? I love. I it. know it's why because Amy. So, I mean, I'll just give you the history of Adam and I. My ex girlfriend and still friend Lindsay L was like, hey, I, I, how do you know Lindsay? How did you guys, did you guys write together? We wrote together a long time ago, and then uh, and then she started writing for this last record, and uh, she invited me to start uh, writing with her a little bit, and so we went out on the Olay uh, tour bus and wrote while she was out on the road. We wrote uh, a couple songs um, that, m- that may have been about you. Um, uh, wait, what song, <laughs> did, what song did you guys write together? <laughs> okay, this is all, what song did you guys? Well, uh, we wrote Waiting on You. Oh that, yeah, that the, was about me. Single, yeah. yeah, that's about me. <laughs> that's the song that like got Bobby to start actually dating her. I know, right? Wait, no, wait, waiting. No, 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 no. That was what um. Was? Wait, what, what? How do waiting? Worth, no. the, worth the wait. Was worth that? the wait was yeah. the one. I didn't. I didn't write oh. that. Yeah, that was Travis Meadows. I didn't write that one. Oh, so much waiting. Sorry. So a lot of waiting. I know, it was a lot of waiting. But you wrote that one. Did you write another one on that record too? Uh, with Lindsay. Yeah. Uh, good. Oh yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. Good. Good, good, good. Yep, that one. Like, like I have to struggle to remember them. I know that record like the back of my hand. <laughs> good, so good. Lindsay's like, hey, there's a guy that I've been writing with that you will be friends with, and he's from Arkansas, and you guys will just like each other. And I was like, cool. And he's, she's like, hey, uh, you guys hang out. And so you and I started hanging out, and then you came and filled in and played Raging Idiot shows with us for a while. Yeah. You know, the funny thing I never told you about that um, is we were writing that song with Brandon Ray and uh, in, in the me, middle you of, and Brandon me and you and Brandon writing yeah. a song. And in the middle of that, you're like, hey, do you play electric guitar? Any other rational human being in the world would say, I mean, kind of. What Adam Henry said was, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, so, and so those gigs came up, and... And I like frantically went home, like put my electric guitar rig back together. I hadn't played in like three years, and uh, and learned all the songs as best I could. I was like, I hope Bobby doesn't think I'm the worst electric guitar player ever. Yeah, and Adam played electric guitar for us. <laughs> Amy, at one point we were playing a show, and we were going into Beastie Boys, and I was like, kick it, and it, and and it starts, yeah, and it goes, and the song goes, kick it, and wow, you know, big, and, and Adam starts to play Brown Eyed Girl, <laughs> dun, 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 and we're like, what? And so then we just sing Brown Eyed Girl. The very first show. The very, very first, first show. show. And that's, but why do you do that? I asked. I, he's right I looked here. At, I looked at the wrong. I looked at the wrong song in the set. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I was I was the only electric player because normally the, you know you have two play two electric guitar players and I was the only one and uh, and so I was like just super nervous you know like <laughs> and it was my first show and, and he was in a jumpsuit and I was in a jumpsuit it was a whole it was thing. Kansas and a million degrees outside yeah <laughs> look at this guy you got a kid and a wife yeah you're yeah. so balanced like you, you, you're like you're a good <laughs> dude with like a, a great family I, I I am very lucky my, my wife is uh she is a rock star she she works in medicine and uh, and so she's a real deal serious human being and um and we have a we have a two-year-old little girl yeah. you're proud to be from Arkansas huh I am I, I like to wear my Arkansas on my sleeve too. I don't yeah. feel like enough people do that. Me too. Yeah. Good for get a tattoo like me. A big one. A big, <laughs> a big obnoxious one. one that everybody's like, what's that tape on your arm? The slobber hog. I'm gonna yes. get the slobber hog on my chest. Bobby, you <laughs> always talk about in Arkansas, y'all would go hunting for mm-hmm. um Yeah, just, at Crater Diamond State Park. Crater Diamond, mm-hmm. Yes. And you would so I was like, I feel like, you know, Justin Moore, he found a little Hey. Found a diamond. Listen, found a diamond let, let me in say Arkansas. this. You ever see the Grinch at Soul Christmas that, that cartoon? Oh yeah. You know when his heart grows like three sizes because he's like Christmas gets him. You know what I mean? That's how I yep. feel when you came in here and you oh, played. You just killed it. My, my heart grew three sizes. I'll, I'll take it. I'm, I'll super, take it. I'm super happy for you, man. Thanks, dude. Thank you for uh, you know. Thank you for having me in and, and let me play. Because uh, you got you you came people. in. You you earned your way in. Like at, at there's no we're friends, so it's harder to get on the show when yeah. you're friends. <laughs> it really is. I won't. Yeah. For, you know, because it's like yeah, hey, bring his friends in. I don't want that to be because you're that good. Thanks, man. And so I, I really do appreciate it, and it's uh, it's been a lot of fun just like getting a step into this after after writing, because because I moved to Nashville to write songs, and that was just getting to do music as a career was was the dream. Um, but I but this artist bug like it just never left me, and so when the opportunity came to start recording music myself and doing the thing myself, um, it's just meant a lot to me to get to do that. So 
I know. I remember us talking talking on the bus, being like, "Dude, I'm thinking, I'm like." You got it, man. Yeah. You're good enough. You're awesome. You're like Harry Potter of country music. <laughs> yeah. So it looks like like Harry. You know what I mean? There, there are worse things. There are. I've been called way worse. <laughs> even today. Even today. Adam Hambrick, rocking all night long. Good for you, man. Really Thank proud you. of you. Thank you. Clap your hands for Adam Hambrick, everybody. Download that song. Stream that song. Go see him when he's out. We'll be back in one second.